Hey, welcome back. In the previous part of this series, we learned how to use hooks in order to execute code at a certain point of a page life cycle, and that's in fact the way to create animations before or after leaving or entering a page. The thing is, we have used only one transition, and that way transitions will look the same between the pages, and that's a limitation in case we have a website that has different interactions between every pair of pages. So that said, to diversify the transitions, we need to add more elements in the transitions array, which we did at the beginning of the previous video by creating three transitions, yet we didn't exploit them. Again, let's say we have a set of transitions, one only of these transitions will be chosen to be applied if a certain condition is met, it's quite the same idea as a switch statement. Actually, these conditions have a name in Barba, which is rules. So that said, we have three different rules that can be used within a couple of properties. Properties kind of detect the direction of the transition. We have from, to, and we can also use both of them at the same time. Then we have rules which are the actual conditions that we have been just talking about. There are three of them in total, which are namespace, route, and custom. Let's start with the from property. From represents the starting point or page right before the transition to the next one. It's simple as that. Now we need to use a rule. In this example, we'll use namespace. If you remember, a namespace is basically a name that we can give to a container. So this essentially means that this transition won't take place unless we go from a page that has the container with the namespace of Dino3. Now if we test this out, you see that nothing has happened in trying to go from the first page to the third, however, the message from the enter hook gets printed on the console when we try to go from the third page to any other one, meaning that the transition is being applied. Keep in mind that we can set more than a single namespace in the namespace property. And now as you can see, the message appear only if we start the transition from the first or the third page. We have also the route rule, which won't work unless we install the Barba Router plugin. The third rule we can use is custom. Custom is basically a function that returns a boolean. If the value returned equals to true, the transition will take place from any page, since we didn't specify the namespace. On the other hand, if custom returns false, the transition will not be applied. Same as hooks, custom takes a data object that we can use to make it as a factor on which depends the value returned by the function. This way, the amazing transition will be applied only if the trigger of the transition is the forward button. We can also combine rules, which means that both of the rules need to be valid in order to apply the transition. Therefore, in this example, the amazing transition won't be applied unless we go from the page that has Dino2 as a container, and at the same time the trigger must be the forward button. The second property we can use is to, it's basically the opposite of from. Then we have the combination of from and to.
In this example, the amazing transition will be applied only if we go from the third page to the second one. Let's add another transition. Now that we have two transitions with the exact same properties and rules, which one do you think is gonna be applied? Let's find out. As you can see, Barba chose to apply the second transition instead of the first. Now let's edit the second transition by removing the form property and try again. This time, Barba chose to apply the first transition. In Barba GS, rules have priorities, same as the priorities of the classic operators in JavaScript or any other language. So, that being said, here's the order of priorities from the highest to the lowest. Now, with the priorities, everything is self-explanatory. In the first example, Barba chose to apply the second transition based on the order of the transitions, since both of them have the same properties and rules. In the second example, the first transition was applied because it has the from and two properties, while the second transition had only one property, which is two. Now, let's remove the two property from the first transition and see what will happen. The second transition was applied because the two property has a higher priority than from. Again, let's set both of the transitions with the same properties and rules. Now, let's play a bit with the rules. So, in the first transition, we'll be using the custom function. As you can see, going from the first page to the second one, no transition was applied as both of the transition's conditions were not fulfilled. Then again, the amazing transition was not applied because the trigger was not the back button. However, Barba chose to apply the gorgeous transition since it has its condition verified. Finally, using the back button, the amazing transition got selected over the gorgeous transition because it has the custom function which has a high priority than the namespace role. In a real world project we may stumble upon a case where we need to use the same hook in every single transition, consequently that would create redundancy which affects the organization of the code and the performance of the page as well. Thankfully Barba provides what it's called a global hook which we can declare outside of the init function and it will be called in every single transition. In this example, every transition will have an enter hook. Views work almost the same way as transitions, except that we use them only to init or destroy things. They are the same as React lifecycle methods, such as component did mount, or Angular lifecycle methods, such as ng on init or ng on destroy. To use views, we need the view property which accepts an array of objects as a value. Each object represents a view and it contains the namespace of the view in addition to a subset of transition hooks, which are before leave, after leave, before enter, and after enter.
The debug property displays different kind of information related to the transitions. With this property, we can redefine the names of the data attributes. So, up until now, we have been using data barba to set the wrapper and the container. For instance, we can change that so we can start using data my app instead. To do that, we need to add the prefix property within the schema object. We got the error because we still have data barba as a prefix on the other pages, so let's change that. In addition to that, we can also change the value used to set the container. If we open the network window in the Chrome inspector, you'll notice that Barba sends the request to the server just by hovering on the link. That is actually done intentionally in order to use the amount of time used to click on the link and exploit it to log the page instead. In case we want to stop that behavior, we need to set the prefetch ignore property to true. Again, on the network window, as you can see, a request is made to the server only once each time we want to open a page, then it gets cached and no more requests are sent again. We can also stop this behavior for some of the pages where we want the client to keep getting the data from the server instead of the cache. To do that, we need to use the cacheignore property and set the path of each page we don't want it to be cached. We can disable Barba completely using the prevent property. Prevent takes a function as a value and we can set an object as a parameter for this function that contains in its turn three properties which are the element, the trigger and the href of the next page. In this example we are going to disable Barba if the element that got clicked on has stopped Barba as a class. Now, as you can see, whenever I click on the second page's link, the entire page gets reloaded. Notice that we are getting an error because we have the custom prefix which won't work since we didn't set it in the init function of the second page.
Sometimes a page could take a quite long time to load due to a slow network or a pretty high page size. Usually Barba waits for a certain amount of time for the page to get loaded. However, if the loading time surpasses the waiting duration, Barba will abort the transition and sends an error message instead. To customize the waiting duration, we need to use the timeout property and set its value in milliseconds. Let's add a link to a non-existing page and see what will happen when we try to open it. As you can see, an error message gets displayed on the page. We can change that behavior to make Barba redirect the visitor to a custom 404 page or any other page. To do that, we need to use a property called request error, which takes a function as a value. This function takes four parameters, which are the triggering element, the action that occurred on the elements, such as click or hover, the requested URL, and the response code. Now, let's say we want to redirect the visitor to the main page if they try to access a page that doesn't exist. To do that, we need to use the response code. If it equals to 404, then Barba will redirect the visitor using the go method. Then, we need to use the return false statement to prevent Barba from redirecting the user to the requested URL in the first place, since we want them to be instantly redirected to the custom page. So this is it for this tutorial, you have now almost all what you need to start creating some amazing pages transitions. I'll be adding another video where I'll be applying some of what we've learned along this series in a quick and very basic example. So make sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next video.